Hi guys, welcome back to my studio. I'm Gina and in today's video I'm going to be moving on and creating Jareth, the Goblin King, one of my favourite characters out of the labyrinth. Today I'm going to be concentrating on creating the jacket, which was a lot of fun to pull together, and the hair. Oh my god, that actually turned out way better than what I thought. And you know, as always, every project goes through, it goes through a bit of an ugly stage and wasn't too sure if it was going to come together but it did so I'm really happy so without further ado let's get into it so for the jacket I actually found a pattern online and it was for a full-sized adult sized jacket uh, coat tails and uh, I've just reduced it down on my photocopier so this is this is the size that it is now um, and because it's a full size or adult size to coat and tail, there are a number of pieces to the pattern. And the pattern didn't come with any instructions. So I'm just going to work my way around what I feel is a logical sort of step to take. Um, so for like, for example, these couple of pieces that bit fits there. Um, just to try and work my way around and just stitching the whole lot together. And I'm going to start with these two pieces in the middle here, which sort of make up this sort of um, part of the back and down the side. This, of course, is the side seam. And one thing I probably could have realized uh, earlier on is was how to put the sleeve in. I think it was the bit that I really struggled with because it... I ended up by just sit, stitching in it at the end but I think if I was to do this again I'd sew these pieces together in a slightly different order it just made sense um, to start here and then work my way around slowly stitching each piece together um, until I've got basically two sides of the jacket So once the two side pieces are all sewn together, I'm just going to take them together and basically stitch down the centre of the back. And this is now going to start creating the actual jacket. Um, I think if I was going to do this again, and I think I mentioned this before, but um, I'd, I'd not only stitch them in a different um, order, but I'd try and find some fabric that was really, really soft. This is a great colour. It is absolutely perfect as far as the colour goes, but it's just a little bit too synthetic and it's a little bit stiff, um, especially for this particular size. So I'm not too sure how it is all going to sort of sit on the doll. Um, and then you can kind of see all the detail on the back, which I'm actually really, really happy about. Um, it actually adds some um, more dimension to it, even though there's a few more steps in actually pulling this together uh, and here I'm actually going to just going to stitch the sleeves together I'm just going to stitch them um, down the seam and then I'm going to place them into the jacket and stitch around the armhole 
Like I say, I probably could have done this in a slightly different order, uh, but it all worked out in the end. So there we go, there it is looking pretty good actually, I'm quite happy with actually how it's sitting. I have given it a little bit of a press as well just to see if I can get it to sit um, nicely um, and it's not sitting too badly actually after a, after, uh, a little bit of a press with the iron. Um, this is actually some wired ribbon that I managed to find that had a pretty good colour match and I'm going to use this for the, uh, some of the details on the jacket, namely the lapel um, or the collar and as well as some sleeve details and also there's a panel along the back of the jacket. So sort of all around the top part of the jacket just to add some extra details and I'm just going to kind of eye it up. I know this is probably not quite the right way to do it but there is no right way to do it. Um, so I'm just going to cut it to the size of the the jacket uh, lapel and then I'm just going to stitch that into place on both sides and then I'm also going to just use um, another piece to create the collar so I'm going to actually use the wire in the ribbon um, to my advantage and I'm going to just stitch this onto the back here and then once it's all stitched on I can actually uh, fold it uh, in half, actually I ended up by folding it in, into thirds and then using the wire to help hold the collar into place. So I'm really happy with how that's turned out as well. I think I probably would have really struggled if I didn't have the wire into the collar and it really does actually help hold the jacket in place. So I'm really happy with how it's starting to come together and the next step is to create um, some sequin details on it. So I just grabbed some sequins out of a bag and some beads as well so I want to add some additional little details on the lapels as well as the back of the jacket. So for the uh, shirt and the trousers, I'm actually just going to use the shirt that came with the doll. Um, this was a groom out of a bride and groom, so he had like um, a nice suit and with a bow tie so, and, and some black buttons. So I've just removed all of those and I'm just stitching on a little bit of a ruffle that I've created just with um, a gathered up piece of fabric that I've just frayed on either, either end, either side of the fabric. I wanted to create the ruffle but I didn't want to create the bulk. So I've kind of sort of compromised a little bit and created it this way. And then I'm just going to add some bead details around the top of this of the shirt um, just as a little bit of an adornment on it. I have actually lengthened the body on this so that's why the trousers look like they're actually way too short now but I'm actually using his porcelain leg parts. I'm actually going to create, paint them black and they will create the boots of the outfit. So the pants and the shirt are what came with the doll already so I'm just reusing those and just creating the jacket um, from scratch.
So the next major detail for the character is Jareth's hair. It's quite iconic in the movie and one of the things that I was excited about but also not really looking forward to because I've actually got no idea how this is going to turn out. But I'm just going to follow a process and I will link um, the channel of this amazing creator below. And I'm just going to follow her tutorial. So basically I'm going to cover the head with cling wrap and actually when I removed the hair it was actually a full porcelain head so I was actually very very happy with that sometimes I have a hole in the middle of them so I'm just going to cover it with cling film and then wrap a rubber band around it to hold it into place and actually the size of this is actually quite good it it smooths out reasonably well but if there are any creases in it um, recommendation is to smooth those out as much as possible and then I'm going to use some very, um, very thin chul, which is uh, very soft and it's got a little bit of stretch to it. And I'm just going to double layer that over and then put that over the head. So what I'm basically trying to do here is to create a wig cap. And so I'm going to use um, this process. And um, I wasn't too sure how this was going to work at the scale, but actually it, it does actually turn out quite well in the end. So again, just removing any creases, just trying to get that as smooth um, over the head as possible. That's why it's better if it's a bit soft, the fabric. And then you're just using some tacky glue or any white glue, PVA also would work. And then just basically covering it with some a thin layer of, um, I was going to say a thin layer of paint, but of course it's not paint, it's a thin layer of glue. And this just takes a couple of layers. I did three layers, but actually if I was going to do this again, I'd probably do about five layers. It still was just slightly a bit thin and a bit kind of a uh, bit soft. So I think if I was to do this again, I'd, I'd definitely do a couple more layers. But it does actually work. I was actually surprised actually how well it works, uh, this process. So yeah, um, if you are interested in doing this, please check out the tutorials from um, the link that I've put in below. Um, the lady is absolutely phenomenal in the work that she does. Uh, I definitely don't do it justice. She does use a slightly different scale, but anyway, check her out if you, if you are interested in, in having a look at how that process works. going to set that side to dry and then I'm going to move on to creating the wefts for the hair. So what I'm going to use is a 100% acrylic yarn and I'm going to use a couple of colours. So I've got this sort of mid-brown colour as well as a very pale cream and I'm going to mix them in together. So I'm going to take two strands of the light brown and then one of the cream and then I'm just going to knot them around this um, piece of yarn that I've got across the table. Do I have your approval, Mr. Supervisor? Thank you very much. So yeah, I'm just going to work my way through and just tie these onto the piece of yarn. And then I'm going to work my way through and just brush them out. The easiest way I found to do that was to actually spend some time and separate the, out the different strands of the yarn. The brushing, just plain brushing out didn't seem to work for me. Um, and so this was the easiest way that I found to do it. The length of the yarn, I've kind of roughly done it twice the length that I think that I need. Actually, it's probably more like four times the length that I think that I need. And because I know that I'm going to lose a lot of it when I brush it out.
So once I've got them all separated, I can actually move on to brushing them, brushing it out. I'm just using a plastic bristled brush. It's just a small one. And actually, as you can see, I'm starting to brush that through. There's a lot of it coming, separating out. Um, so I just slowly work my way through and just spend a bit of time just uh, making sure that I've got all of the strands out and removing any sort of knots that start to appear. And then once I've done all of that, I can move on to straightening it. So the hair straighteners that I've got actually have a temperature setting on it. So I've just put them onto the very lowest setting and starting from there. So just working my way through the different wefts and just allowing that to just come straight. And it actually makes quite a bit of a difference um, from when it's got all just combed out and all nice and fluffy into um, some, it really does bring some bit of shine to it, which is quite cool. Now to prepare the wefts, um, what I'm going to do is just cut off the little knot. Um, so I've got a nice little straight edge. Lay that down onto a piece of plastic. I'm just using a, um, you know, takeaway container lid, any type of plastic. And then I'm just going to work my way with the comb and just separate out the fibres a little bit more than just what they are clumped together on, on the strand. And then using a bit of PVA or craft glue or any sort of white glue, um, I'm just going to paint the end of the end of the weft. And then I'm just going to allow that to dry. And because it's on the plastic, it'll actually pull away from the plastic once that glue is actually dry. Um, the re recommendation is to leave it overnight. I left it um, maybe a good couple of hours before I pulled it off with the plastic being clear I can kind of see when the glue was actually dry so this actually worked far better than what I actually thought that it would because I wasn't too sure if it was actually going to hold together but um, I was quietly surprised So now the wig cap is all done, it's had its three layers, but like I mentioned earlier, I probably would do a couple more if I was doing it again. And just to, I just need to slowly and carefully remove the plastic wrap so I don't pull the shape of the cap too much out of place. And then I'm just going to trim off the excess and then I'm just going to let that sit that aside um, just so that the it dries out completely, just so that you know the, where the plastic's pulled away, it's just a little bit damp in there. Um, and yeah, I'm just gonna yeah, just basically set that aside and let that fully dry. So while the wig cap is drying and all the wefts are drying, I'm just going to move on and create some of the details on his face, namely his eye makeup, which is also quite iconic for the character. And I've just sprayed a coat of Mr. Super Clear over the top, which is a um, which is a sealant that will just allow, which creates a bit of a paper surface on the doll which means that my watercolour pencils work, um, work a lot better than what they would if it was just straight porcelain. So I'm just starting off with a very sort of mid-tone brown and then um, just adding in some of the details in there before I move on to the white and the black, which is the additional details onto the doll.
So now the wefts are dry, all I can do is just need to do is just pull them off the plastic, which works incredibly well. And then uh, I'm just going to trim the the glue down and just to the outside of the weft. I'm just actually going to before I glue it to the actual wood cap. I am going to cut it down even further, but just for now that's perfectly fine. This is the wood cap on the doll, and I've just put a bit of plastic wrap underneath it just in case there was any additional glue that come, goes through the cap onto the doll until I'm ready to actually glue it into place. And then I'm just going to start from the bottom and work my way around, just trying to follow a natural hairline um, from the back all the way up to the front. And then also with a, adding a little bit of a fringe as well and trying to get the hair to sit in such a way that when I go to style it, it's all going to stick out in the right direction <laughs> because um, just with the particular hairstyle, I do want it to make sure that it is going to cover um, all of the different aspects of that particular hairstyle as I can as I can get it. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to work my way around and right up to the very crown as well as adding in a fringe detail also. Now the fun begins which is actually the styling of the wig so this is the bit that I was really looking forward to the most um, because this is when the character really does start to come together um, so I'm just starting off by snipping off um, a little bit a little bit and often just so that I'm not trying to cut too much away all in one go and I'm just going to work my way around and just start to trim it down and then try and soften some of the hard um, edges of the cut just by using the scissors um, in the same direction as the wefts of the hair just to try and soften those edges just a little bit. So one of the things uh, that I wanted to try was to create some mini irons for the hair. So I'm just using some tweezers in my irons and I've just put them into the blades of the irons, they're still on, just to heat up the end of the tweezers and I'm just using them to try and curl around the hair just so that it wasn't sticking completely up in the ear because it did feel like a bit of a really bad 80s um, pop star kind of hairstyle, um, which probably isn't really too far off the actual original kind of thought. But what I wanted to do is just curl it around just ever so slightly, just to kind of give it a little bit more texture and a little bit more body. And then I um, just worked my way through doing that. So I've just continued on to style it just a little bit and I've actually added a little bit of um, product on it just to try and st soften the fluff of it because it was still quite fluffy but I realised that I probably cut away too many um, of the longer pieces a little bit further up in the um, on the wig. So what I'm doing here is I'm just taking some very thin strands and actually just gluing those into, into place just to add a little bit more um, just some longer strands uh, in random places.
And there we go, he's all finished. I'm really happy with how he's turned out, but what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. I've still got a couple more things to finish off with this project. I've got one more character to make and I've got some lights to create as well. So I'm really keen to get some of those organic shapes into the chandeliers that you that you see in the in the ballroom. And then all I need to do is pull the whole thing together. So I'm really excited on what's to come. So if you like this video, consider hitting that like button. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. And I will catch you in the next one. Bye for now.